now joining us on the Megacast is Fire Marshal and Assistant Fire Chief from the Troy Fire Department is Chuck Reister with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Assistant Chief, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So how are you? How's your team at the Troy Fire Department? Everybody's doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, with the uh, with the advent of uh, this disease, uh, we're still trying to deliver our services. Everybody is using as much uh, personal protective equipment as possible. Uh, they limit their exposure, so we're uh, moving right along. It's good to hear, and we haven't really had a whole lot of information. We haven't talked to the Troy Fire Department just yet. This is the first time we're talking to your department during this pandemic. Uh, how has the department been holding up during the pandemic? Every every department seems to have had a different story of how they've dealt with the nuances of this pandemic. How has the Troy Fire Department done? Well, we are a unique organization in that we are mostly volunteer. We are what's uh, referred to as a combination department, a career and volunteer. We have about 11 career folks and they handle the day-to-day -day operations, the fire prevention aspect of the community, uh, the training of the uh, community risk reduction, uh, the maintenance of the stations and, and the apparatus. Uh, so that's what those 11 folks do. The 165 firefighters that we have are all volunteers and they respond to calls 24-7, uh, 365. Those are the folks that uh, you have a problem, they come to your house. We've talked a lot with the West Bloomfield Fire Department, the Bloomfield Township Fire Department about different precautions they're taking, going out on calls, keeping COVID-19 in, in mind. Uh, your volunteer firefighters and your, and your full-time firefighters, what precautions are they taking as they're going out onto emergency calls in the local area, keeping the pandemic in mind? They pretty much follow the guidelines of the CDC uh, and the Oakland County Medical Control. We're wearing gloves and uh, masks. Uh, we wear, you know, protective equipment, uh, whatever's been issued to us, we use, we follow the same hand washing procedures, we do the uh, social distancing, uh, what we do is we try and limit the number of people that are first in to make sure that it's safe for them to enter or determine what level of uh, personal protective equipment they need to wear, uh, and then we bring in just the number of people that we need. How are you handling all of that in the middle of this heat wave on top of it? Well, for us, it's a, uh, a daily, daily dealing. Uh, we, do, we have to do this, as all emergency responders do, in all kinds of weather. doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold, it's rainy or sunny, uh, humid or dry. Uh, we have to respond. When, when the community calls, we respond. So uh, we, we remind our folks to uh, hydrate especially during this time of year, we remind them to wear the proper level of protective clothing, no matter how hot it's gonna be, and uh, just think safe practices. Being joined by Chuck Reister, the Assistant Fire Chief and Fire Marshal from the Troy Fire Department on the Oakland County Megacast throughout the local area. The 4th of July weekend just passed. A record number of consumer fireworks were purchased and were shot off during the holiday weekend. Uh, the Detroit experienced many safety issues or, or calls from the community. How did the community do in terms of safely celebrating the holiday? Actually, the, uh, the calls, the number of calls the fire department received were very minimal. We had a report of a grass fire. We had a report of a trash fire. Uh, we had no building fires. Uh, the department does not routinely respond to medical emergencies. We contract with uh, Alliance Mobile Health for that. But uh, just to, to kind of put this in perspective, the uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission, which um, tracks the data on injuries, uh, just released a report for 2019, and they indicated that there were over 10,000 injuries and 12 firework-related deaths that were reported in 2019. And what you have to remember is those are the folks that actually went to an emergency room and received treatment for some type of injury. And this was during the month right around uh, the 4th of July, so they considered June the 21st to July the 21st, that time period. But what most people don't understand is that the, a large percentage of the injuries are to uh, children under the age of 19. And a good portion of those are between 5 and 14 years old. Um, now, I would have to ask you, um, do you what, what do you think is the device that causes the most injuries in that age group? Sparklers. Yeah. It's sparklers. Absolutely. People don't understand those things burn between 1,000 and 1,200 degrees. And then we light them, we hand them to a child and say, go run in the dark. So it's, uh, 
it's something that we need to be extremely careful with whenever we give any child a, uh, a lighted device. Chuck Raystor with us. He is the fire chief and the assistant fire chief and the fire marshal at the Troy Fire Department. So the holiday weekend's over. Fireworks are no longer legally allowed to be shot off by con consumers in the local area. Uh, but some people have some left over. Maybe they have some extra fireworks that they didn't shoot off, they weren't able to use. Uh, how, how do they go about safely disposing of those or storing of those properly uh, in their homes? Well, I would recommend, number one, that they, if they can store them, they not store them in the home. If they have a shed or they have a garage, store those there, uh, put them in a dry place and uh, they, they should keep just fine. There are uh, several times during the year where you can discharge consumer fireworks legally. Fourth of July is just one of them. Uh, Memorial Day is another and Labor Day is coming up. So you can discharge them on that day as well. And you can discharge some on uh, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Uh, those, those are pretty much the only holidays the state allows. They do allow them to discharge up to uh, 1145 at night, which uh, as a parent, I'm not real happy about, but <laughs> the law is the law. And, uh, you know, we, we just ask that if people have questions about how to use the devices safely, they can go on the Consumer Product Safety Commission website. They can contact their local fire department. And, uh, you know, we, we want you to enjoy the holiday. We just we don't want to see anybody get hurt. Assistant Chief Reister, up until recent weeks, we had some really good numbers in terms of COVID-19 uh, new cases and, and deaths in the state of Michigan. Uh, the, the, the death numbers have remained uh, pretty, pretty consistent over the last several weeks, but the new case numbers are significantly rising throughout the state of, uh, of Michigan in certain pockets. And uh, the average over the two week period, last two weeks has nearly doubled, doubled from the two weeks before that. Since we've seen a lot of spikes, uh, and people maybe are letting their guards down, mask wearing has been more reluctant. How has this been affecting the city of Troy? It's got a very vibrant business, retail, and restaurant community. Has compliance been good between, of course, the residents and civilians that are visiting the city, and has, it been, has the compliance been good at these local businesses? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, it has been. We, we've, uh, we're not aware of any uh, severe cases where people are openly, openly defiant of uh, the governor's orders. Uh, even when they do the protests, uh, we've, uh, we keep an eye on the crowd and almost everybody is wearing a mask. Uh, I, I believe that, that you know, the people in, in Oakland County do a very good job of uh, following the governor's executive orders. Uh, one of the things people have to keep in mind is that even though the number of reported cases are rising, that coincides with the number of the amount of testing that the county health department is doing, and that number is constantly rising. So the more you test, the more cases you're going to find. The, the bigger question would be, if the number of cases are rising, how many of those cases have actually been hospitalized? So um, although the numbers are rising, I don't know that there's an increase in the lack of security to the individual, but as long as you're following the social distancing and wearing the masks, washing your hands, and all of, all of the health and safety rules, uh, for the most part, I, I think uh, we can maintain the, the flatness of the curve, as they say. As the fire marshal, how has your job changed during this pandemic? Well, uh, I, get, I get a lot more questions about code enforcement, what we can do, what we can't do. The executive orders have to deal more with um, the public health department than it does with the fire department. In a lot of communities, the fire department is charged with providing EMS, and so they're directly related to it. But, you know, we're, we're starting to see as businesses open, we're getting calls about how many people can I have in here? How can we safely do this? And a lot of that, you know, we have people rely on Obviously, there's uh, printed information from the governor's office and from the health department, but we want you to rely on, on good sense practices. You know, maintain that social distancing, uh, provide people with the opportunity to clean up as much as possible. The staff, every business that I've been into, uh, especially those that are considered public assemblies, the bars, the restaurants, uh, the gathering places, the staff that's there is, is just doing a fantastic job of uh, wearing the masks and keeping people separated, keeping them happy, and, and just doing a great job of uh, keeping business going. Chuck Raystor with us. He's the fire marshal and assistant fire chief at the Troy Fire Department. In terms of helping businesses maintain compliance and, and uh, put measures in place to be COVID-19 safe, 
how has the Troy Fire Department contributed to, to that from an educational standpoint, from an assistance standpoint, and getting these businesses to a point where they're ready, where they have been ready or are ready now to open to the public and, and, and enforce these guidelines? Well, what, what we do is we encourage the businesses to uh, reach out to us if they have questions. As I said, a lot of this stuff is just uh, applying good sense to this. And um, we have, uh, we've reached out on social media. I've got uh, a couple of um, staff lieutenants that work on Facebook and the other social media uh, platforms to get information out, to do short videos, to do educational information, uh, provide that to the community so that everybody understands where do we stand with this and how can we continue to be safe? Uh, Chuck Racer with us. He's the fire marshal and assistant fire chief at the Troy Fire Department. Uh, we're now in the summer season. Education, of course, is a huge component of what fire marshals and assistant fire marshals and, and fire departments uh, partake in in, in community relations standpoints. Uh, what are some common hazards that you see often in Troy or that other fire marshals throughout the local area may experience uh, over the summer as we're transitioning into the warmer, warmer months? And what are some ways that people can prevent these common safety hazards from becoming an issue in their homes? Well, probably, you know, the biggest one that uh, a community would deal with in the summertime with regards to the fire department uh, is going to be outdoor fires. People are always calling, you know, can I have a fire outside? What can I burn? How long can I burn? Do I need a permit? And every community is a little bit different. In the city of Troy, you're allowed to have what we refer to as a ground fire that would be similar to a campfire uh, as long as it's not greater than three feet around two feet tall and it burned season dried firewood you can't burn yard waste you can't go and pick up all the uh, clippings that you just cut off the bushes and the trees and throw those in because they're going to generate smoke and next thing you know we're going to be getting phone calls from the neighbors i can't go outside i can't open my windows uh, a lot of having a, a yard fire a ground fire is uh, about being nice to your neighbors too. You know, uh, we, we understand you wanna, you know, have that little campfire, you wanna invite some friends over, maintaining that social distancing, but uh, you know, be outside and, and socialize and that's great, but you wanna think about your neighbors as well. So, you know, if um, uh, probably one of the last things I'd mention on that is if you're gonna have one, make sure it's constantly attended by an adult. Uh, these things can get out of hand very quickly. Uh, we've been to garage fires, we've been to house fires, People will have a device on their deck. It'll let loose, set their deck on fire, and next thing you know, their house is involved. So as long as it's constantly attended, there's less of a chance anybody's going to lose property or get injured. Uh, Chuck Raster, the fire marshal for the Troy Fire Department, also their assistant fire chief. Anything else you'd like to share with us before we let you go? No, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, get this message out. You know, we want our community, we want every community to be safe. We want everybody to have a good time. But if you have any questions, if you're not sure, by all means, call us uh, in any community that you're in. Call your local fire department. They'll be more than happy to either provide you with the information. They might even come on out and help you figure out what you can do and what you can't do. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Chuck Reister, the assistant fire chief and the fire marshal at the Troy Fire Department with us on the Oakland County Megacast.